what does that do to you? you know, how does it make you feel? Why do you want to feel that way? I've always been the type of I always ask a whole bunch of questions. In fact, I don't tell the kids this, but I'm that kid that is growing up, I never even smoked weed. My, bud, my buddies smoked weed, but I couldn't go home smelling like that. And I know I could. My mom would kill me. And that was, honestly, that was the biggest deterrent. I just can't go home smelling like that. And I've never liked the smell. Uh, I don't like the smell of smoke, even today. At 53 years old, smoke, being around smoke, it makes me sick. I'm just, uh, if I'm too close in, if I get in the car, and just open in the car, a rental car, that kind of, uh, I gotta get up out of it because it literally makes me sick. Um, about to throw up, that kind of stuff. But anyway, I said all that to say this. In high school, um, I was that kid that all my buddies knew that, and drinking, I tried to drink, but when I find out that when I get drink, when I, when I drink a little bit, I go to sleep, I stop drinking. Um, because I miss all the fun. I miss, when I was drink, if I drunk two beers, I was gonna be going, I, I fall asleep. So, no need to be drinking, because then I miss all the other stuff, so. But my buddy would say, like, if you ask me, hey, look, you wanna hit this? My buddy go, oh, no, no, don't even ask him, don't even ask him, he'll mess up your eye. Because I would ask all the questions. I was like, so what, why do you do that? What, what's the purpose of that? And how does it make you feel? So you feel like you need that to make you feel like, I was just, I, I just wanted to know. I was curious. Uh, but it got so bad that if I was around and y'all were smoking, my buddies would tell you, don't ask him. Don't ask him to get it. Don't ask him to get it. Because he's going to ask 50 questions. He's going to mess up your life. You know, so uh, I, I, I went through 11th grade, 12th grade year as that kid that people didn't want to talk to. If they were going to do something, They'd all get together and they'd go somewhere else and leave me out. And that was fine with me. It was absolutely fine. Um, but this kind of stuff that's going on today, it's a whole lot different. But I'm still that same person that I want to know, why? Why would you do that? Who thought of that? What's the purpose? And, and I'm that person that, even when I start to think about stuff, I'm going, okay, y'all do what? And it does what to you? So even if I think about, you know what, I might try that. But if I was to do it, I got to go first. I got to go first. See, some of y'all right now have no idea about the stuff that I'm talking about. But there's stuff that these kids do today that there's no way that I'm going to follow you or nobody else. And five or six of y'all are not getting ready to do what they do with some of this stuff, and then I got mm -hmm, I'm not doing that. So if I'm crazy enough to agree to do it, I'm going first. We'll talk about it in a second. I see the number on your face. We'll talk about it in a second. Um, so I tell people all the time, don't go to bed today as dumb as you were. Don't go to bed tonight as dumb as you were when you woke up this morning. That's my simple way of saying you can learn something here today if you should. Um, I, I, I say it that way just to get some attention. Some people have been offended by it, uh, but it's, it's just to get your attention. How many of you feel like you know everything you need to know? You can't learn anything else? You can learn something every day, and you should. So when I say, don't go to bed tonight, as dumb as you were when you woke up this morning, I'm not calling you dumb. Okay. But I'm saying learn something. So you, you learn a little bit more to that. Uh, you can learn something every day and you should. That's, that's the purpose of that thing. Learn on purpose. So what am I asking from you today? I'm asking you to participate if you can. I'm asking you to have an open mind, open your eyes, share if you're familiar with some of this stuff. If you've heard about it, you know other kids are doing it, you know other folks are talking about it. Um, even in your neighborhood or your community, if it's going on, share that stuff with everybody else that's here today. Be open to receive, gain something that you uh, that you might need that will be able to help somebody else. Um, and then just, when you understand that the, the, the power that you have in sharing, you, you can understand how powerful the web is, because everybody has access to the web. Everybody. I, I got a person I've, I've been trying to help do some stuff and deal with some issues that they have at home with their kids. Her four-year-old grandbaby knows more about getting on the internet and searching YouTube than she does. And the four-year-old can't even read. But she can find everything she wants on YouTube at four. Seriously. And my, my, my question initially was, she can't read. She can't spell. She can't. How does she get to the stuff on YouTube without typing in something she like that's what she wanted to know? Like, how does she get to the stuff on YouTube she needs to get to? And she can't type in nothing because she don't know how to spell it, you know? How does that happen? But that little, that little baby can swipe and look through stuff and before you know it, she's with it. I remember my niece did this to me. I got a new phone and she was like, oh, let me see your phone. I'm going to play games on your phone. I was like, we ain't got no games on my phone. She said, what kind of phone you got? I told her. 
Yeah, that's got my favorite game on. Mm -hmm. so I ain't got no phone. I ain't got no games on my phone. No, I know I, I looked for them before. I solitaire and stuff like that. I used to play. So ain't nothing on my phone. And she said, let me see your phone. I gave her my phone. She gave me to me. She said, huh, you got to give me your code. So I entered my code, unlock it, gave it to her. In like two seconds, she was like, see, my favorite game. And she couldn't read. You know, Nala was like, she was probably four, maybe five at the time. But she, she went right to my phone and found her favorite game on my phone. And I thought I didn't have games on. Anyway, um, there's kids out there today doing all kinds of stuff, and we gotta understand we gotta invest in our youth because they are our future. They're the most natural resource that we have, the most valuable resource that we have is our kids. They're the future. Um, and if we're not gonna protect them, we're gonna end up in a whole lot worse of a situation than we are in right now. Alright? So we're gonna talk about some stuff. I'm gonna go real fast because normally this is about two to three hour class and the rest of the music is two to three hour class. So I'm gonna put all of it in three hours, so we're gonna we're gonna go fast, okay? Alright. Um so objectives, what are they doing? We're gonna talk about farming, uh, we're gonna talk about ways that they get the buzz. Do you know about anything that's going on? Have you heard of anything that's new? Anything that you might be curious about or stuff that you've heard that you were just like, what? They do what? Anybody? Anything you want to share? All right, so you guys heard about uh, stringing, plugging, backpacking, goosing, choking game. Huh? Choking game? You heard of that? You heard of the burning alcohol? Burning alcohol? Yeah, burning alcohol and getting the vapor. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. So the alcohol challenge I'm talking about is when they would douse themselves in alcohol and set themselves on fire. Yeah. 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 And, and that just, I mean, it's, it's a two-second, three-second burn, and then it goes away. You know, are you brave enough to do that? They video themselves doing that. You're talking about burning alcohol to get a buzz or something? Yeah. That, that, I hadn't heard of that. Vapor? Uh, Making it turn into a vapor? Yeah, it turns into the vapor and yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. What time, tell me, tell me what y'all talking about, tell me. She was asking me, she was making the statement that she shared that information. Now one of my students recently, like one of my groups, she was talking about they do the choking thing. They just pass out for a second and then come back to the, she said she liked it. And it's just as addictive. Uh, and also with the choking game, the, the, the other reason that they do it is during sex. It's supposed to increase the, the orgasm, it's supposed to be like this a whole lot better. Yes, ma'am. We had a problem at the school one time with children snorting cinnamon. What is that? Uh, yeah. Um, snorting cinnamon? Or was it? The, the, cinnamon, the cinnamon challenge was they were doing a spoonful that I'm familiar with. I don't know about the snorting of it. Uh, they were doing a spoonful of it. They were snorting it. Okay. All right. Um, I know that they'll crush up no nos, vibrin, they'll pour out the PC sticks. Um, the Smarties, they'll crush up the Smarties, stuff like that, and they'll snort those. I'm, I'm familiar with all that, but I'm not familiar with them snorting the cinnamon. The purpose of the cinnamon challenge is take a spoonful of cinnamon uh, to see if you can swallow it uh, without throwing up, throwing snot bubbles. Anyway, you get video while you're doing it. Um, and then they post a video to just see if it goes viral. It doesn't cause any change in your body. So what was the stringing? You mentioned stringing at first. Oh, uh, it was like, Stringing, plugging, backpacking, and goosing. All those are the oh, same thing. Okay. What is They're it? all the same thing. Uh, soaking a tampon mm -hmm. in an alcoholic beverage mm -hmm. and then inserting it. Girls insert it in their vagina, boys insert a tampon in their butt. Stop the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's directly. What's this all the It goes directly. It goes directly into the bloodstream, so they get they get drunk and never it never goes into the body, never passes filtration system, none of that, so, and you don't smell it on their breath, the only way you're going to test it is do a blood test. And that's what that burning of the alcohol does, too. It gets it in quicker, and it has no scent. There's no scent on it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, so, so stuff like the Tide Pod Challenge, even the fabric softener challenge, y'all know they need the fabric softener, uh, sheets and all that. All that stuff is just challenges. It, does, it doesn't alter your chemical state of mind or being or anything. Yes, sir. Now, the huffing. Yes, the huffing causes you to get high. So that's the difference. That's what it means. All right, we got a conversation over here too. Y'all share, share with everybody what's up, man.
No, we make we writing notes. She, <laughs> she had me write the plugging down. Yeah. Oh, so okay. and we we gonna look at it. I'm gonna show you videos yeah. and stuff. We gonna yeah, talk I'm about still love. Like Man. Still oh, okay. okay, all right. So yes, any sir. new ingredients with the Huff and the Science, the Marfin, the White Out, anything else you've been oh, you seen? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm trying to, I know the gas, no, we had a young man who utilized the um, gasoline, put in the in his hat, and it overpowered him, and you know, of course it killed him right there on site because he just poured too much in his hat rim. But you know, he was using uh, pure gasoline. And his mom thought he was out there cutting grass, and she went out there too about two hours later, and he was just beside her mom. Yeah, there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole lot of different things that they huff. A whole lot of different things. Uh, even you, some of some of them you'll see that they got a brown paper bag. They'll spray polyurethane in the brown paper bag, and when they, when they get finished huffing that, they have a ring around their face. From the part of your thing. Uh, it's just, but there's a lot of stuff. We're, we're going to talk about even cow patties. Who? Cow patties. Oh, from the nitrogen? They even huff and cow patties. Oh, yeah, the nitrogen is in. Yes, cow manure. So, I was going to ask you what did. We're going to talk about okay. it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Um, where do they get all these ideas from? Friends, so what? Internet, friends. Uh, a lot of this stuff is in music. A lot of stuff is on the radio. A lot of stuff they're talking about. We just don't know the code words. We don't know the the slang for what they're saying in, in the music. So once you learn it, you know they, they switch it up and they say something else. Uh, I mean, I don't know if y'all know, but you know, in my neighborhood, I used to mention this girl named Mary. But Mary's an old hat. There's a new girl in town now. Her name is Molly. You know, so I don't yeah. mess with Mary no more. All I do with now is Molly. I mean, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I don't mess with Mary. I don't mess with Mary no more. I'm not. Now all I do is mess with it. Ecstasy. Pop pills. Yeah. It's, it's stuff like that. And if you have no idea, like the look I see on some of y'all face, like, huh? Right now. See, if you have no idea what they're saying, you would have missed that whole thing. You think, yeah, he, his girlfriend used to be married. Now he's talking about it. No, he's telling you he used to smoke weed. Now he don't even pull weed no more. All he's doing is popping pills. Ecstasy. MDMA. Some, some form of it. Okay? All right. I spent a whole lot of time talking about this, but we won't get to where I need to get to. Um, excuses I usually hear from kids. I, I've been working with kids over 20 years now. These are just some of the excuses that I hear, some of the things I might tell them, things that they might say. Um, so what does it look like today? What types of games with alcohol and drugs do they play? Are people around you or people in your circle, people in your neighborhood, people in your community, are they doing these things? Do you know about it? Are you aware that kids get together and have parties like this? There are some parents who actually fund these parties. <laughs> there are parents who will not only have it at their house, the parents will go rent the hotel room because they'll let them tear up the hotel room instead of tearing up their house. And the parents pay, knowing that they're going to have alcohol and pills at the, at the party, and they let them do that. Um, um, the thing about, is it a cool thing, a sex thing, or to get high? Because there's some things that they do to get high, some things they've already they, they tied it into sex, and I want y'all to think that this is a sex class today, but a lot of this stuff is going to be sexual in nature that we're going to talk about, because these young folks are doing stuff. Grapes, or strawberries, bananas, potatoes, oranges, they're doing stuff and stuff like that, that and you're thinking they're eating their fruits and veggies. <laughs> yeah. But they're eating their fruits and veggies, but they do as much as they little and, and to consume them. It's so the choking game, for instance, it causes a high and it's just as addictive. But then they choke themselves, and this is how they end up killing themselves playing the choking game when they do it by themselves. Yeah. They do it by themselves, masturbating, uh, get caught up in a position where you're supposed to time it where you're about to have your orgasm at the same time you're about to pass out. The problem is if you pass out with this apparatus around your neck, you just killed yourself. Your parents come home and they think you hung yourself. But you were really getting off trying to choke yourself. Uh, there was a young man in Arkansas, or it's probably been 18 years ago now, that he was initially convicted of a 
of killing the young girl. He was 19, she was 17, they were dating. But during sex, she liked to be choked. He was choking her, she killed him harder and harder. Basically, he choked and killed her during sex. Um, they convicted him. He got sentenced to, uh, I wanna say it was like 18 years. Um, but they, they fought for an appeal. Her friends came on his behalf to testify during the appeal process that she was not only uh, very sexually active, she was the aggressor and she preferred to be choked during sex. That was a request. They brought other folks that she had been with and they testified for this young man to get out of jail and they ended up letting him out, uh, I think 18 months into his sentence. Uh, they let him out, but he was still on parole or probation or whatever, but they let him out of jail. You got Did he have the best no Register as a sex offender? No. No. All right, have you heard, guys heard about eyeballing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about it. Now, if it's the eyeballing I'm talking about, this when I was in college, my roommate from New York, he hit me to eyeball me because that was something he did. Okay. I, I never took a part in Okay, I got you. All right. Uh, I tell my wife about it now, and uh, she still get a trip out of uh, leaving that somebody would. If it's what I'm thinking it is. Well, tell us what it is. Let me see it first. No, no, no. Come on. Come on, tell us what it is. Uh, is, it, is it where the person is actually putting their mouth over somebody else's eye? Putting their mouth over somebody yeah, else's eye? Yeah, uh, because this is what, okay, well, no. see, that's what you told you to. Well, tell us about that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, he would end up sucking the eyeball and you know, it caused some type of stimulation for the person who eyeballed he was, you know, but also it would leave a black ring around the young lady's eyes so you would know, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was, on campus he was known as the eyeballer, you know, because he, he like, and he would tell people he loved eyeballing. And so, yeah, so this is, like I said, that might be something totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is not quite that. <laughs> But you know what? You know what? Is it when you do what? I said mental health. He is now. Big somebody's eyeball. He is now. He is now a top engineer at a. Like that? Oh, I thought you said you like people licking your eyeballs. <laughs> hey, I would tell you this though. He had a lot of girlfriends on campus. That's what? The eyeballs. He was licking her eyeballs. Licking her eyeballs or something. He was. Uh, yes, ma'am. Wow. <laughs> And that's what a lot of people know it as. That's what. Um, the visine, and instead of, instead, of, instead of visine, they put alcohol in the visine, you know, and drop, drop that in the eye. But this is not just that. This is them actually. You do what that's old, oh. the visine. Okay. That's old. Now see, this was 80s right here, what I'm talking about. So that's why I was saying it's probably something totally different. This is actually them pouring alcohol into their eye. Vodka, gin, rum, whatever. There's all kind of videos on YouTube. Vodka eyeballing. Uh, what they learned is the brown liquor burn worse than the clear liquor. The brown liquor burn like crazy. The clear liquor burns too, but the brown liquor burn worse. But there's videos. Uh, there's this one girl. She pours a shot glass and then she puts it over her eye. And you see her bat in her eye, you know, you can look at her eye and it looks like it's magnified. So it's magnified. But she's doing that to get the liquor in her eye. But she can roll it from this eye over to the other eye, never drop a, or never waste a drop of it, and then do the other eye. And that's her claim to fame. Her, if you if you YouTube a uh, vodka eyeball and you look at hers, you'll know hers. Because hers has a whole lot of hits on it. Everybody likes to watch hers. Because they're amazing how she can do it and roll it to the other eye and not, not waste any of it. So it gets them drunk. Get some drunk, it, the alcohol goes into the bloodstream um, without having to drink it or taste it. And they get the <laughs> same thing about when they put it up there. They, they get the effects of it because they don't have to taste it. All right, so here's a video. Here's a, the newscast talking about alcohol. Thank you. 6-11, it is back to school time for many kids, but also college students. And this semester, a disturbing trend that hit the tip YouTube and is getting more and more popular. Stephanie Myers joins us now live to talk about it. Steph, what is vodka eyeball? Yeah, Lauren, it's not like two things that just wouldn't go together. However, college kids are actually taking shots of vodka instead of drinking and pouring it straight into their eyes for a quick buzz. And it's called vodka eyeballing. It's a disturbing trend that's gaining momentum. 
Even as drunken college antics go, this looks like a stretch of the imagination. But more and more videos like this one are popping up on YouTube. I asked local college students if they heard of the trend called vodka eyeballing. Hearing it, but when I talk to my friends, nobody's ever heard of it. Like they were just like, well, how do you even do that? Like with your, like, you put vodka in your eyes. I <laughs> However, Dr. Greg Lee of Lee Eye Care of Cape Girardeau says, although he hasn't seen any cases, he's hearing more and more about it and wants to warn college kids and their parents about how dangerous this really is. What we know is this, is that, you know, vodka is 40% alcohol. What's going to happen if I take alcohol and I pour it into my eye? Dr. Lee worries about this trend as both an optometrist and a father of three college-age kids himself. He says besides the obvious side effects, like a red, burning, irritated, maybe even swollen eye, there could be some more serious consequences. And this is a clear window that we see through. So if you begin to scar the cornea, that is when you run into the vision, you know, potentially permanent visual problems. Problems that could be permanent. So you're having a direct pathway straight into the central nervous system. If it soaks on in and gets into the optic nerve, which is the part that connects the eye to the brain, that becomes soaked in alcohol. Well, then you could have a really big problem. And, and, and damaged optic nerves cause blackouts. You know, that's going, it's going, and there's no repair there. He says he'd tell his patients the same thing he tells his own kids. Please don't do that again. And, and tell all your friends that don't do it again either because there's just too much that can go wrong. And you're risking your visual uh, well-being by trying to get a little bit of a quicker high. There's got to be another idea better than that. Now some substance abuse experts think they are doing this to get drunk faster, but when the effects of alcohol have already set in and impaired their judgment, that's when they do it. A lot of people are doing it more as a prank as more than a way to get drunk, really. So if you heard of this, just head to our Facebook page and tell us what you think about vodka eyeballing. Lauren, I am rolling my eyes at that. Why would anyone do that? Okay. So when I first heard about this, it was like 2005 when I first heard it. Um, so I started doing maybe some stuff in 2008. Um, this is just me going on blogs, uh, talking and chatting with folks, seeing if they do it, if they've heard it. And then, then I started just looking a lot of other places. Um, and then stuff like, does it hurt? Yep, it burns, like, you know. I mean, it's just, but there's like two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, Lucy, uh, talking about the teenagers, yes, this is the widespread trend, me and pretty much all of my friends do it. I don't even know if it gets you more drunk, but it's just one of those things everyone does. You know, four o'clock in the morning, she's, she's blogging. This is one, one o'clock in the morning, this lady's talking about it. But vodka eye shots, uh, a lot of people are doing it, kids are doing it. it it's all over here. If you go on YouTube and you just put, put it in, it's all kinds of stuff uh, that you'll find. Uh, do you know about these? I told you guys we're gonna try to go fast, so I'm gonna go real fast for a lot of this stuff. Triple C's, y'all know what triple C's are? Mm -hmm. Course eating cold and coughs. Yeah. Course eating cold and coughs. Right up the counter. Huh? Wake up. No. It's cold no. medicine for folks that have high blood pressure. Well, there, there is a there, there is a BP, there is a HBP version of it. Uh, and we're talking about the pills, so I'm not talking about the liquid. I don't know if you're talking about the liquid that you pour in the cup. We're talking about the little pills. They look like um, what kids do with this, they'll put them in the Skittles bag. So you think they're walking around and some of y'all know about that, okay. So they're walking around and they also call it skittling. So you might also, which is the next thing, they might call it skittling. Um, and if you look at the little Skittles bag they walk around with, you look in there, they're going to look the same. They're just smaller and they have a C with a circle on them. And I don't even know if you guys know this or not, but all of the Skittles have the word Skittles written on them. So, if you look in the bag, kids walk around and they be shaking their bag up and they open the bag and pour something in their mouth. That's what they usually do. Uh, but if they've got coarse eating cold and cough in there, they usually dig around, pull one or two out at a time, uh, and they'll just eat it and swallow it. So if I coarse eat cold and cough, I just swallow it. I put the skillet in my mouth, you'll see me chewing. That, 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 that's a little tip for you. you. You'll know the difference. If you see them just swallow, that was a pill. If you see them chewing, that was a piece of candy. Uh, but what happens is they'll just shake the bag up sometimes and they go pour it. And the problem is, is this, if they eat too many in a short period of time, it usually makes them sick. And we're talking about stomach cramps, 
hurting, I mean, bent over, complaining about hurting really bad. Now, the problem that we have in schools is this. A little girl starts complaining about her stomach hurting. First thing y'all think is what? It's, 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 it's time for a cycle. You know, he's, he's, we're going to get you some Motrin or whatever y'all do and sit him somewhere and let him lay down. But what about a little boy that comes to you and he's talking about he's crying? He's hurt. Oh, hurt. You got to go to the bathroom. First thing y'all look at you. When that time he had a bowel movement, you know, are you constipated? You're like, oh, ain't, ain't got no bathroom. But nobody ever thinks about this. Didn't know about it. She said she didn't know about it. And, and, and this becomes the issue. So if I eat whatever my limit is, but you got to learn, like you have to learn what your limit is. So if I eat two or three of them and it gives me that buzz I want, but if I eat five or six of them, now I'm getting sick. The problem is if I eat too many of them, it can actually kill me. It can stop my heart. And there are a bunch of kids who are not paying attention to all that stuff. Yes, sir. Oh, the other thing that I've, I have seen before is this is a kid that is prescribed, like, you know, ADHD medicine, and they're supposed to warn them about taking cough medicine because anything, any type of cough medicine that has the DXN in it, so that's your day pills, that kind of stuff, it combines in the stomach with Adderall and creates a more potent form that can cause like heart palpitations and that kind of thing. I've seen a kid who he, he didn't even think anything of it. He was just having sinus issues. He had taken some Dayquil or something, Dayquil tablets. I don't even think he did the liquid. But he, and then he took his Adderall like he normally would and he like was, his heart was just racing, racing. I mean, he, you know, when the paramedics came, his blood pressure was just sky high. Right. And his heart rate was too, but it's because you're not supposed to do both of those at the same time. And you would think that they would tell them about that, but it's not really common knowledge. Sometimes they do it on purpose. You know, oh, yeah. have heard people doing that on purpose. Um, that's why it's important when the doctor asks you, what other meds are you on? And they want you to, I'm, I'm talking to you grown folk now in the room. And as you bring your list of medicines with you to the doctor, or at least bring, bring the meds, you're not gonna bring the meds, bring a list of the meds. Um, you guys remember the Levert guy, uh, Eddie Levert? Yeah. Sure. 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 One died. Sure. One died. Sure. One died. Well, both of them did, but one of them died in jail. Gerald. Well, the baby boy died in jail. Yeah. But, but what happened was he went to the infirmary in jail because he had some issues. And the doctor prescribed him some medicine to take, but he didn't tell the doctor the other meds that he, that he was taking from home that he took. He took the meds and basically that night he just laid down and went to sleep and didn't wake up. The combination of the meds mixed together. So we talk about central nervous system stimulants. I don't want to get too technical on anybody, but central nervous system stimulants, central nervous system depressants. So if you mix three, four central nervous system depressants together, that slows your heart rate. And in essence, what happened with the, with the Levert, I don't remember which one, I don't remember his name, but the Levert guy, the youngest one, he took so many, or so much of it, that he fell asleep, and his heart just forgot to beat. Think about that. It slows your blood pressure down so much that your heart just, and then, that boy. So when I tell kids, now, depending on who I'm talking to, I do workshops with males and females, but primarily when I'm doing talks with my males, um, we talk about the use of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs in the talk because a lot of times, ladies, I don't know if y'all know this or if y'all wanna admit this, guys believe if we get you drunk or otherwise outside of your normal state of mind, we're more likely to get what we want from you, okay? All right, um, so these little boys, they think the same thing. But when I tell them stuff that they need to know, for example, what drinking does to their body, uh, when they think that when they're drunk, they perform better, I tell them it doesn't work that way. Physically, it does not work that way. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant. What causes your little thing to be the way it's going to be when it's time for you to perform is the increase of blood flow down there and the ability for it to retain the blood flow. For it to stay like this, the blood flow has to get there and it has to stay there. It has to remain there, it will constantly be replenished. But the central nervous system depressant actually does this presses the blood flow from there. So instead of it is, you get this. And that's the example that I have to use for them. They go, I said, now, you get her drunk, and it does the same thing for her. 
it slows down the blood flow to that area that you're trying to stimulate. So you think you're doing something, you're already a five minute man. You think you're doing something and you just slow down the length of process it's gonna take to get her where she needs to get to, but you're gonna get there quicker and it's gonna be over faster. So now you're gonna get the reputation of not being able to perform. And I promise you, this is, I, this is real as I tell you guys, I'm telling like tell y'all now, and I promise you almost after every class I do with these kids, at least one, but sometimes five, six, seven of them, <laughs> and, this, and this is what they want to know when we done. That, that's what you said about the alcohol. We just try to scare her. Or, or do it really do that to her. It won't stay hard. It don't actually stay hard long as you if you don't try. But you for real. And she'll come quicker if you don't get her drunk. She's got to do the past But she ain't going to do that if she ain't drunk. <laughs> These are conversations I, I literally have with young men, and they range from that to a, a whole lot more in depth. But I need her to do stuff to me when she. So I mean, I'm just giving you the facts. And you make the decision, and I do honestly believe now age appropriate stuff. And I don't anybody think I'm, I'm telling nine and ten year olds this stuff, but age appropriate stuff. And if they ask, I'm not going to try to give them anything that they're not ready for. They don't ask for either, but. Giving them the information, I think if I arm them with the information, they're better able to make better choices and decisions. So, that's how it is, sir. But you know, I'm, when you said that, I was thinking about when I used to work in the psych unit, mm -hmm. we used to have grown-ups coming in who was injecting men, who was injecting their penis with cocaine. Mm -hmm. And you know, for that, you know, in actuality, did the opposite thing, it shut off the blood, and some of them ended up losing. And those guys who snort cocaine would put cocaine on the head of their penis to numb it, so that they wouldn't feel it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Why? You don't want to feel that. Much. Well, because if it's numb, it'll last longer. Okay. That's the idea. Yeah. You know, if I don't feel the sensation of whether you perform oral sex or whether I'm in your vagina, if I don't feel that as much, I'm gonna last longer. That's that's the mindset. So they would send them up to the psych unit for a while. <laughs> want us to evaluate them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's that's old. That's old. They've been doing that for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, skittling, when you get talk about skittling, pay attention to uh, whether they got skittles or not. Pay attention to whether it's just skittles in the bag uh, or whether it's skittles and or in the car. The other thing about skittling is it can refer to same-sex relationships. It can refer to any party with pills. Um, having a skittles party, the same thing as having a farm party. A farm party, P-H-A-R-M, is not the same as an F-A-R-M party, okay? P-H-A-R-M is a pharmaceutical party. So when we're having a farm party, they do those parking lot at the grocery store after it's closed, they'll do them in a field somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, they'll do them right in your driveway in the trunk with the trunk of the car popped up and they got a bag, a garbage can, or a box, or a container like this. And they'll, the, the, the way you participate is you have to get some medicine from your mom, dad, grandparents, wherever, and you come and we pull them all into the little Why container. Sometimes they do it with dice. Sometimes they do the little spinner, the little spinner with the numbers on it, one through six. Um, sometimes they, just, they let you get whatever you want to get. Um, but they're usually drinking when they do it. And what does most of your medicine say? Do not mix with alcohol. And they're usually drinking alcohol when they do it. Uh, so imagine if you roll, boom, you roll the dice and you roll the nine. You're supposed to get nine pills out of it, they ain't take them. And you can drink it with alcohol. Yeah. So those are called skilled, skilling parties, farm parties. And they might be called something different where you are. You need to learn what, whatever they're called where you are. Uh, ecstasy, MDMA, um, any form of that stuff is. Ecstasy, in, in its purest form, ecstasy, the purpose of ecstasy is, well, not the purpose of it, it's designed for something else, but what they found is ecstasy heightens all of the pleasure sensors in the body. You know what I'm talking about? So imagine me being at a college campus uh, in Kansas, and uh, this young man says, uh, I know what he's saying is right about X, because when I'm on X, I can't even wear clothes, because clothes make me come. He said that in the session. And I'm looking at him like, really good. He just stood up and said that. And it's like 300 students. 
the student body at this, this workshop on this college campus. But what he's saying is, not anything touching his skin. Young lady told me before, uh, I found out I was scratching my nose. Made me feel good, so I kept scratching my nose till I was done scratching my nose. And this is what she was doing. She said, until I was done scratching my nose. Y'all know what she's talking about? Just doing this. Mm -hmm. Cause having an orgasm. Just this. A young man admitted that he stomped his toe and it caused him to have an orgasm. When you're when you on edge. Have y'all seen the movie, uh, it's Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, the uh, Bad Boys. Bad Boys 2, though, I think it is. It's the two. The one where they find the drugs in the morgue, and, and, and Martin is about, he's about this Bad Boys 2. Martin is about to get sick. I forget his name. He's about to get sick. Um, and they, when they find the drugs in the, in the, the cadaver of the body, and then Will tosses them to him, Mike Lowry tosses them to him, and he catches him. He said, We got a partner. But I don't know if y'all noticed, but a couple of the pills fell into the glass. And he gets in some water, and he drinks, and he drinks a couple of the pills. Now, I know that's a movie, but what they show y'all in that movie is a good depiction of what X does to your body. When they're in the car, and they're driving to the captain's house, Martin is sitting in that car, and he starts going, get out of here. And he starts touching the car, and he's like, ooh, this leather. Ooh. Mike, you ever felt your leather? I feel so supple. So soft. And he just, I know that's a movie, but it's a good example of what people have told me how when they on X, just touching stuff, just feeling just anything makes them feel good. They get to the house, Mike Lowry knocking on the door, and Martin rubbing all on his back. On the back. Just touching, just because he wants to touch something. He's like, what's wrong with you? Stop. And he's like, look, we're about to get the search warrant. Stop. They knock on the captain, open the door. He goes in, and Martin's like, hey, captain, you got a Feng Shui house, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And he goes, he starts rubbing on stuff. He's looking at the captain's statues. Got the breast out showing. He's rubbing on the breast on the statue. He ends up going upstairs and getting in the captain's robe. Because he, he had to get out of his clothes. Because he was like, that's what X does to you. That's how it affects you. And it makes anything that any, touch anything and feels good to you. Feels good. I hope don't nobody even trying to go out and do some eggs now. <laughs> All right. But uh, that's, and even the kids that I talk to that do it, they're like, man, you just don't understand. I, I guess I don't understand. Because it's addictive to me. It's addictive. Okay? Um, binge drinking. The games they play with, with drinking. Um, we used to have a uh, beer pong tournament at, what was the name of the place? Um, I said we, not me. This is a mm. um, restaurant. TGI Fridays had beer pong tournaments, and y'all know you know they do the beer pong tournaments. Yeah. So you gotta pay fifteen dollars, and you get six, or you get twelve, six uh, cups of beer down there, six cups of beer down here. Three, two, one. And the idea is you bounce the ping pong ball into the beer they have to drink. Now it's fifteen dollars. Catch okay, this, this is how stupid this is to me. It's fifteen dollars per person. And all you get is twelve cups of beer, which is really not even four cups. Not even four cups. Not even four cups, but it's probably equivalent to a six pack. I, I just paid fifteen dollars to play this game. And I don't even get to drink the whole six pack. And I told y'all already. I think I didn't, I mean I, I couldn't drink anyway. But I I'm going home and pay $15 for six beers. I know it's 12 cups on this table, but that's equivalent to probably six beers. But my buddy, who's my partner, he just gave y'all $15. And it's two on that team. They just gave y'all $15 each. That's $60 for six beers. What kind of sense does that make? That's doing half hour, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense, though. It makes no sense. Y'all could have went out and bought y'all own case and still had money left over and did a makeshift beer. But I guess the, the, the thing is, we're doing it in the restaurant. Look, there's an apple, not just one. There's several. There's several Applebee's in Georgia that after nine o'clock they turn into the club. It's a family dining experience. 
That's what the sign says. But after nine, they bring out the little, uh, it's supposed to be karaoke. They advertise it as karaoke. They bring out the little portable DJ stand, complete with the little thing up here with the uh, glow on it, the disco ball glow on it, like from the 70s. And it's supposed to be karaoke, but nobody does karaoke. They just play the songs and move them tables right down the front and have people dance right there. It's Applebee's. Applebee's. So yeah, they do two for one, half the hour. And I'm bringing all this stuff up because the majority of the people that's in here and that's buying this aren't even drinking age. But they selling them alcohol. They selling them alcohol. Yeah, anyway, okay. Trail mix or farming, that's the peels in a container. Crumb juice, even if they create their own crumb juice, but you know you can go buy crumb juice. But you can create your own crumb juice. Most of our kids create their own crumb juice. They call it Dirty Sprite, that old Texas tea, something along those lines. You might know a better name for it from whatever they do locally. Um, but if they're talking about Dirty Sprite, y'all know what Dirty Sprite is? <laughs> Tell me what the ingredients, how to make it. That's right. So you know about it, but you don't know how to make it. You don't know exactly what they do. You know? They also um, mix Xanax and Sprite. Um, what do they call that? They call it Dirty Sprite too and put the Jolly Ranch in it. And put the Jolly Ranch in it. So I, that's, I, I want to hear y'all talk about what all they put in the Sprite. So I did what you got. I heard that they also mix like maybe some greens and a cream syrup and pro magazine. That's not why the promethazine is in there, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Promethazine, codeine, Xanax, maybe some vodka. The promethazine is in there because it actually knocks you out. For those of y'all who don't know, promethazine is the generic form of phenergan. Phenergan is a nausea medication. Anybody ever taken it before? What did it do to you when you took it? <laughs> what did it do to you? Made you throw up. Okay, what did it do to you? Make you sleepy. Because I was taking, it made me go to sleep because right. I was taking it with another medicine. Right. Yeah. No, not because you took the other medicine. That's what made you go to sleep. Yeah, it makes you sleepy. That, it, 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 not, it don't just make you go to sleep. Yeah. You don't even remember saying it all out for me. Yeah. Yeah. It knocks you out. Yeah. Fat Joe hit you with the shoulder lean. Ladies keep sipping that from in the scene. Y'all heard that before? Yeah. Y'all done paid that any attention? I know we're going to do music after this one, but if you ever paid that song any attention, keep listening. He gets to the part where he tells you, when you wake up, you won't even know what happened to you. Me and my old crew will have already run through you. That's, that's the purpose of the permitting thing. It knocks you out. And you don't remember much either after you take it. That's the purpose of the permitting thing. Uh, sipping on scissor, lean, word, dirty, sprite, all those different things. Uh, they're, they're stuff that they mix up and they, and they take. So dirty sprite generally is a sprite, a two liter sprite, uh, two teaspoons of promethazine with codeine, which is the cough syrup. That's an expensive cough syrup, even if you got insurance. Uh, the cheapest I've ever heard that it is is $108, and that's even with the insurance. Without the insurance, it's two, three, four hundred dollars. So your kids are doing stuff like, if you got promethazine with codeine in your refrigerator, they're taking that to school and they're selling it for $20 a hit. My question is, where do your kids get the $20? Take, take, let, me, let me back up. If you got Nike in your refrigerator, if you got any cough syrup with DM, the kids are taking that to school, $5 and $10, in the Nike wheel cup, $5 to $10 a hit. For those of y'all who don't know, the kids who take Ritalin, Adderall, Zen, uh, what's the other? Ritalin, Adderall, and for ADD, ADHD? They got Ritalin, 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 their college kids were taking this stuff who don't need it and help them stay up all night and study. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. People were using it for weight loss. Like yeah. The child was mm -hmm. taking care of taking from the child and using it to lose weight. Yeah. They because that, the child was losing right. weight. Because that's a side effect for all, you know, even oh, those who yeah. strive for it. That's why you right. just have to give them the mm -hmm. vitamin to increase the appetite. Yeah, that's true. So, what are they? Folks that take kids that take Adderall sometimes they're after 
place. They lose their appetite over the presentation. There's three on that list that they sell that at the school stuff that they try to make folks aware of. But there's three. We're going to add all in one more that the kids go to school specifically to sell Stratera. If I hear the name, I can tell you. It's, it, it was really, really popular at first and then kind of fell off. And it was for ADHD? It's for ADD, ADHD, one of them. I don't know. Type in type top three prescribed meds for, for ADD or something. Um, anyway, if, when, when I think of it, I'll tell you. I guess I'll have brain farts all day yesterday too. But when it comes to me, I, I'll tell you. All right. Um, so Primo, y'all know what Primo is? Yeah, but what, what's different about the marijuana? Lace, lace. lace, lace. with what? Um, the the stuff that embalm uh, people with. Embalm people. Uh, yeah. Right. All that's all that's yes. Well, yes. Hashish oil, embalming fluid, formaldehyde, um, cocaine, uh, cow patties crumpled up, put it on the weed. If the weed is laced with something, it's and especially if it's supposed to be good, but if it causes you to hallucinate, they say that's prima. What you buy is was it? Somebody said that a few minutes ago, and it sounded right, but I, I, I think it was, I think, I, it had three I think it had three syllables in them. I know Ritalin already. Yeah, Ritalin was, was already, already. You said, you said concern. Ritalin and Adderall in his Because they got five instances on the three, but I know they stopped that because it's Ritalin, 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 it has a side effect to it. It's, it's got three syllables to it. That's what somebody else said. That just it doesn't ring the bell, but that's the one that's on that list. I got a list from OJJDP that they had the top three that they were selling. What's your name? Is it stimulant? Lipping you and you should. Yeah, it's got three syllables. Yeah, it's got three syllables. It is yeah, I'm I'm gonna, on, on the break, I'm going to pull up my little email, email and see what I got for the next and I'll see if I can Okay. All right, so look, Primo. Primo weed. The kids who take trips is what they refer to it as. If you've been Primo, it means you smoke some weed that had been laced with something that caused you to hallucinate, go somewhere, but you don't come all the way back. Y'all know kids that have been Primo? Y'all know some folk grown folks with Primo? They smoke some weed and they ain't never been the same since they smoked that weed. They, they call that, they, they say that's, they got Primo. It's usually the hallucinogen that makes them do that. Uh, LSD, PCP, mushrooms, whatever. What you got? Uh, I was going to say Dexrim. That's not it. That's closer. Okay. That's closer. Okay. It, okay. it sounds like that. Okay. It's three syllables, but it, I, I know it's three syllables. I know what it is. It's Ritalin, Adderall, and the, what the other one is. Because they got Ritalin, Adderall. They got those two. And it's my boy. It's, it's, I just can't think of the third. Um, all right, so look. We got folks that smoke weed, and especially for the very first time, they smoke weed that's been laced with something. Um, hash in and of itself is less potent than the hashish oil. So when they soak it in the hashish oil, you might hear people say, it's, it's, I was smoking that wet, or I was smoking that wet wet. That means it's been wet and then dried, and then wet again and dried again, wet wet. So if I was smoking wet, it's been wet one time and then dried, and now I'm smoking. Dipped in the formaldehyde, whatever, whatever it was they wet it with, they let it dry. But if it's one that wet wet, they dipped it in one thing, let it dry, and dipped it in something else and let it dry. It's been dipped twice. And that's usually a whole lot more potent. Whole lot more potent. And then you find people that's uh the weed today is different from the weed that some of you might have smoked when you were growing up, or that you know other folks who smoke when, when you were growing up. The TAC content is a whole lot higher. They found different little ways to do stuff. They'll grow the weed upside down so that the nutrients go more into the buds or the seeds or whatever. So all, all these little tricks they're doing to make the weed more potent. Yes, sir. Now, what I came across was um, we had some students who was actually spraying roach spray on the weed, you know. Um, now, it was causing some psychological stuff in the long run, but it was giving them like a, a four-day high. 
you know. And by that fourth day, you know, they're running into the office because they can't sell the brain down. Can't yeah. sleep. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't concentrate. Can't focus. Yeah. Roach, roach spray is just one thing that they spray on it. The other thing that they were doing, like with the bath salts and all the other the potpourri, homemade weed, the synthetic stuff, they were yeah. mixing all that stuff in there with it too. And I saw all that stuff crazy. Yep. That's when the toxicology report came back. The lady was telling us the number of things. Basically, you've been smoking poison. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. So look, the, uh, the last few on this list have nothing to do with altering your state of being or your state of mind. They're just stupid challenges that people are going to engage in, some of which have caused some deaths. But the cinnamon challenge, that's even more full of cinnamon, video on yourself. The planking challenge, uh, the first death from that one was in Missouri. The guy fell off the banister uh, trying to film himself planking on the banister and the banister broke and he fell off uh, seven stories, fell down. Uh, that killed him. Eating Tide Pods, uh, somebody already mentioned that. Wesley's when you shoot the goddess. It, it's just stupid stuff that folks do. Eating fabric softener sheets. Um, there's a young lady that's addicted to the lavender uh, fabric softener sheets and she just, she just, just constantly eats them. Constantly eats them. And, and they get a hat? No, like I said, these last four don't do anything to alter your chemical state of mind or state of being. It's just stupid stuff kids are doing. It might give them a natural high, you know, uh, it's exciting and they get a rush. But it doesn't do anything to alter their, their state of being. I wonder if that's related to like the pika that people have when they eat, eat stuff. I had a client one time that would eat toilet paper. I don't know why. She would do that. She, she was like a dick. I think we just No idea. Now, we were used to running into that problem, but what happened was they say if there's a nutrition item in it, then you can't diagnose it as being an issue because their body could be craving. The nutrition that it is in it, you know. Yeah, because we had one person, I can't remember what she would like to eat, but because the insurance company said it was a actual nutrition in the item, it was an issue. So, you know. Of course, we treated her for something else. That's the insurance company trying to get out of it. Uh, of course, we treated, her for, we treated her for something else, thus, it would address that issue, but we couldn't put down that. Yeah. I had a client to tell me she drink. Uh, Geritol, liquid, because it gets you higher than alcohol. Well, I, I know when I was in college, I know people who used to buy Listerine and just drink Listerine. Because the Listerine had more alcohol content in it than Thunder Chicken, the, the Wild Irish Rose, the little cheap stuff that they could buy. They go to the fridge and buy a Listerine and get drunk off Listerine. A strain that's going through the bread. Yeah. Yeah. So what does it look what's it? Tell us about it. It's not the tissue. It's the one that you have to dilute with water for real to just, you know. To even wash it out. That's how it's real water. 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 Alright, what about this stuff that's up here? What do they use the turkey basin for? Inserted into their body. To yes. And almost every hole you can think of. Snorting the alcohol, uh, like a pixie stick. Maybe. They'll pour the pixie stuff out. Stuff we, uh, stuff we, it's just straight sugar, right? But they'll pour the pixie stick, they'll, they'll cut the pixie stick about an inch and a half, two inches by the size of a finger. And then they'll snort the pixie stuff up but then they'll pour a shot of liquor in an alcohol glass and then snort the alcohol. So supposedly there's this membrane between the nasal cavity and the brain that the people who snort coke, they say when it hits that, that's like the best feeling ever. So the purpose of snorting the alcohol is trying to make alcohol hit that little membrane and it gives them this feeling that they get over there. Man. Yeah. They crush up no nose and vibrant. Uh, and then of course he can cold and cough. Uh, cow patties. So, uh, I did a workshop in uh, Wakulla County, Florida, and I ended up going back and doing an eight-week uh, thing with them down in Wakulla County, Florida. So apparently, there is a, a large uh, farm population in the area there. And I, I, so part of my thing with, with the community was, y'all have a town hall meeting, y'all talking about what the kids are doing, but there's no kids here. So nothing about us without us is something you'll always hear me say. 
So you can't have meetings about us if we're not part of the meeting. So nothing about us without us. So you got to get some kids here. So before I went back to do the eight weeks, uh, they got a little youth advisory group together. Um, but they had a 17 year old boy in the youth advisory group. Of course, he said he didn't do any of this, but he knew about everything. Uh, he talked about how his uncles and the, the older folks in his community, his older cousins, they had aluminum sheets, uh, and they would go to uh, the party store and buy the dunce caps, that's what he called them, the birthday caps. Y'all know the birthday cap with the little rubber band on it and the hole up in the top? And they would wrap those up in aluminum foil and then make a plug out of aluminum, uh, aluminum foil to, cl to close the top of them. But they bought the aluminum sheets because it worked better. Uh, so you get a fresh cap patty and you slide the aluminum sheet up under it. And then you put the birthday cap over it. And look, this is what he this is what made me think that he's doing. He said he didn't do nothing, but he did what he did. He said, two or three days, Mr. Father. That's all you need. Like two or three days in this Florida evening. That's all you need. And so I think he did too. <laughs> Seriously, he, he literally went there. And they said, two or three days in Florida heat, that's all you need. You go and you take the plug off the cap and you inhale the methane gas. And you plug it back up and leave it and you go and you keep doing that. Every two or three days you go back and you get that high. And they find all these cow patties and they do the same thing with these cow patties. So all, five, 10, 20 of us can get high all the same time. Off, in, off inhaling that methane gas, that methane gas. So he says, but then when it's dried up and it's no longer releasing the methane gas, they would crumble it up on their weed and smoke it. And the burning of it released the rest of the gas that wasn't released from the heat from the sun. He said, but the kids who take trips, just pick up the cow pads. And chew on The boss ones, right? Oh, they no, the dry ones. They dry it out. They just, say, well, after, after they're no longer released the gas, you. they just pick them up and they just chew on They just chew them. Some of them, you know, or some of them will make them trip. The others are poisonous. Yeah. And the difference is like very difficult to see. Now, according to him, the difference is the purple rain. Purple rain. The mushroom that grows up through the good yeah. has a purple ring, and that mushroom is the one that'll get you high. Right. Ah. Has a purple ring around yeah. the mushroom. Yeah. I'm telling you, this kid in this, this youth advisory group told me all this stuff. So. Yeah. But if, they, but if someone didn't know the difference, they could eat something that's right. poisonous. But well, the psilocybin mushrooms grow in cow patties. So what now? They grow in cow patties. That's the number one mushrooms oh. come out of cow patties. But usually there's no other kind of mushrooms that come out of cow patties. So you get around some kind of toxic? Yeah. No, I'm just saying usually it's just psilocybin. That's where the cow, that's what I've always heard as far as mushrooms come off. I was going to tell people, and not just the mushroom tea, there are people who would steep the cow bag and drink the stuff off the cow bag. Make, make like a tea. What are you talking about? Off the cow bag. Medicine. People say, well, that was just the Native American. That was in the Indian. I, I just. Say it again. Peyote. That's what it's called. Peyote. Oh, yeah. Peyote. That's what it's called. Okay. Yep. All right, so many tampons and alcohol. Vaginal intoxication. Uh, do they actually get high from it? The answer to that is yes. Uh, I'm going to show you a clip from a doctor talking about it too and how it, uh, the mucosal walls in the vagina allow it to absorb and this, this and, and all the medical stuff. But kids are doing it. Um, and I, this, is, this is one of the things I hear all the time. Oh, that's not our kids, that's their kids. It's black, white, green, yellow, brown, and purple. Y'all hear me? Hear me when I tell you this. It does not matter what color, what race, what ethnicity, what ethnic, uh, ethnicity they are. All these kids are finding out about it and they're doing it. Now, I'm not saying all kids are doing it, but kids of all races, it does not matter. They call it different stuff. Backpacking, uh, goosing, uh, I've been informed that goosing specifically refers to they only soak their tampons in great goose. 
<laughs> Great Luke. But here's my question. I told y'all when I first first started, I'm the person I always ask the question. If I ain't drinking it, if I ain't tasting it, why I got about the good stuff? <laughs> right. So the, the cheap one with Barnett's, Barnett's, yeah. whatever. The cheap one will work on it. We, I'm just putting it up my butt. I ain't tasting it. Why are you looking at me like that? No, uh, it's just like wearing Walmart jeans and uh, designer jeans. I goosed. I didn't just. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm goosing, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not I'm goosing. Okay. Uh, good. It's a status, huh? Yeah. No, status associated with it, okay. But it could be like, what song is it, you know? Well, probably wasn't Mama's Liquor Cabinet. Okay, right. You don't have to have control every time. Do you? See? <laughs> <laughs> No, but you're going to tell you. You're going to tell your friends you got control. Tacos, you know, they want those. Tacos are cheap one, too, isn't it? That's a real cheap one. Yeah. So can you not use the cheap one? Will it not work? Just saying. All right, watch this real quick. I'm telling you like it is. All right, just when you think you've heard it all when it comes to teens, and I have one of them, paying attention to this, this one might have you saying, wait, what? The new methods teenagers are turning to to get that quick buzz is pretty scary. Reporter Elizabeth Irwin is here with the straight story. Oh boy, Elizabeth. I've got to tell you, skinny guy, there are two things I never thought would appear in the same sentence. Tampons and vodka. Do I have your attention? Good, because if you're a parent, you really need to hear this. Quicker high. Uh, do you think it's going to last longer? It's just more intense. This is not isolated to any school, any city, any any financial area, this is everywhere. When we heard how kids are getting drunk these days, we thought, no way. So we hit up the experts to find out if it's an urban legend or if it's legit. There's been documented cases of people going to the hospital with alcohol poisoning just from utilizing it that way. Officer Chris Thomas spends his days patrolling the halls of the Valley High School. He's heard firsthand how kids are getting tipsy. What we're hearing about is teenagers utilizing uh, tampons, soaking in vodka first before using them. You heard right. Teens taking tampons, soaking them in vodka. <laughs> and inserting them there. It gets absorbed directly into the bloodstream. Um, there's no barrier, there's no stomach acid, there's nothing to prevent it. I would expect it to absorb fairly quickly as well because it's a very vascular structure. This is definitely not just girls. Guys will also use it and now they'll, they'll insert them into their rectums. And that's not all. <laughs> Using a beer bomb rectally is the same concept as a vodka soap tampon. Yep, rather than the traditional beer bomb you find at a college party, kids are sticking the tube elsewhere. What? To get wasted. Yeah. A lot of people believe that it would cover it up. Your breath won't smell like alcohol, so you hide from the parents, hide from the police. But take it from this cop. It won't work. It's not just jail time that might be a problem. These new tricks are really risky. Cause some serious trouble. Plus, what if you overdo it? Do you think you're going to be fine? Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. I think Semester was group of kids got together. Father Jim Bean 
um, change the ball. And uh, they basically had an orgy, about 13 people. Uh, they had an orgy. So this one was the example. When I was telling y'all earlier about if I do stuff, I got, and I saw the look on your face, but I'm saying if I do it, I got to go first. This is an example. This is an example. Jim Bean. All of us get together and we have a party. But at some point, we all end up naked. And y'all gonna put this Jim Bean ball in my butt. See how y'all looking already? So, I gotta get in some kind of position, invert myself, for you to put this, y'all follow me? Mm -hmm. And then somebody, as you just said, or when you watch that, somebody went behind her and put it in his butt. Mm -hmm. Right, so get to where, boom, put it in my butt. But I gotta then say, okay, I had enough, I'm ready to come down. But when I, when I say, okay, y'all let me down, when I come down, so that's the problem I got. <laughs> right! Yeah. Talk about backwash. Yeah. But now next, now then my, then my time to get to, then my time to get to. So did some of us in me come out and go in this? Yeah. And we all using the same ball? <laughs> so anyway, this is what happened. So we ended up with 13 kids at this at this campus that supposedly were part of this orgy that they later found out that there was more than 13 of them ended up with this sexually transmitted disease. Uh, four girls ended up pregnant. They're trying to figure out who belongs to who and what. But anyway, they all blamed it on this incident of underage drinking on this campus. Uh, I was there to address underage drinking. This is after all this stuff happened. So are they telling me all that stuff tomorrow? So I'm that kid and I'm saying, because today, I'm gonna show y'all a video of that. Today what they'll do is they'll take the Jim Bean bottle and they'll pour it into their own bottle and say, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, that's my. See, I feel a little bit better about that because at least now I got my own bottle. <laughs> I got my own bottle. I ain't sharing your bottle, I ain't getting nobody else's bottle. Y'all gonna put my bottle in my butt. I bought it, you know, I'm just saying. Nobody put nothing in my butt, no way. But if I'm crazy enough to do that, at least give me my own bottle. Well, I'm crazy enough to drink out of it before we don't stuff it in the other Probably. 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 Yeah, yes, ma'am. But you know alcohol is a strong stuff and it kills a lot of germs. Not that many germs. Woo! Not that many germs. Yeah. The good stuff. Yeah, so we're gonna take a break in a few minutes, okay? Um, let me get to, uh, I'm gonna get to the butt chug, and when we get to the butt chug, then I'm gonna let y'all take a break. So they do stuff like cucumbers, watermelons, apples, grapes, strawberries, oranges, potatoes, carrots, bananas, and all of this stuff. They just doing all kind of crazy stuff. Um, so I'll give you an example with the cucumber, and we'll move on. I'll address some of those if y'all got questions about it. But so, so with the cucumber, suppose you take a syringe. Oh, wait, before I do that, who got some uh, hand sanitizer? I was thinking about the, no, 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 I don't want to see someone out here. I know it's like this. Yeah, she's yeah, talking about which kind you want. Mm -hmm. I want Bath and Body Works if you got it. <laughs> so look, while, while we're waiting on that, anybody else got hand sanitizer? Y'all pull it out. If you got it, pull it out. Y'all pull it out if you got it. So two things I want to tell y'all right quick. While that video playing made me remember, the three-year-old young girl over in, um, Monroe, Louisiana, they ended up in ICU with blood alcohol poisoning that was in the ICU for three days before they realized, okay, I mean, they investigated the parents trying to figure out how they got blood alcohol poisoning. The baby had um, strawberry, cherry, whatever, flavor, hand sanitizer, and was just doing this and eating, doing this and eating. So that's how she ended up in the ICU, and they finally determined that, you know, the parents didn't necessarily do it, they maybe negligent, but not necessarily anything else. But what you need to know is, Y'all see hand sanitizers in a lot of different places. Your local clinics, I don't know if yours are, but a lot of local clinics are having issues with the hand sanitizer disappearing like that. And I'm talking about the big old jugs that y'all got out there for folks to do. Y'all just got them sitting out there for folks to just come up and do the hand sanitizer, going about their business, and they keep wondering why every day or two they got to replace that big old jug. Because they stealing it. They take it. Now, if you got hand sanitizer, and I ask you to pull it out, I want you to look at the back of it. Even the cheap one, 
has at least 58% alcohol, even the cheap one. Bath and Body Works is usually 78% to 82%. So there's kids who want Bath and Body Works hand sanitizer. Bath and Body Works? Bath and Body Works is usually a whole lot higher than that. 68 to 72? This is 68. Okay, they're usually 68 to 72. This one is how much? So, now this is what, now don't, please, nobody try this at home. Nobody try this at home. But all you need is a drop. All you need one drop. And what you see is kids in class, some of y'all have probably seen this. All, all you need one drop. Watch this, just one. One drop, that's all you need, one drop. And you rub it in the palm of your hand, and you'll feel it warm up. Oh yeah, this is strong. Good gracious. Yeah, there's no way I can even do that with this. That's strong. Woo. Yeah, that's strong. That's strong. What is that? That's a bright color. That's strong. I mean, even just even before. So what you do is you do this. You rub your hand, and when you feel your hand get hot, when you get your hand warm, you do this, and it gives you a look. It, it, it just, so you see kids doing that all the time, getting hand sanitizer, doing this, and then they're doing that like they, no, they getting high on for That, while I was rubbing that, I couldn't even put that to my, I, I was smelling it before I even got to, to do that. I've done this before in the classroom and did it, and it was like, and people thought I was faking, and I wasn't. That, there's no way I was even going to put that to my, my face. That's strong. Whatever it is, that's strong. But, so now, now I can do it again. I can do this, get my hand hot. And I can do this all day. And now all I get is that smell, that very smell. So I need another drop to do it again. So kids are constantly asking for it. They always get a drop in your hand, rub it, get it hot, do that, and they get hot. They get another drop, do it, and they do that, they're getting high off of it. So there are some kids today, which is why I'm telling you about these big ones. Some, some adults think we've got smart enough to say, oh, we'll make the top where it's falling. Y'all know what the kids do? You know, you push the button and it doesn't come out as the liquid comes out of the phone. Mm -hmm. You know what the kids do? They just unscrew the top. <laughs> they just unscrew the top and pour it out. Because you put a, the top on there to make the phone, I ain't got to use the top. That's all. But you got kids now who are drinking this. This is why it's disappearing at a, at a more faster rate than it was Drink before. It. Uh, yes, ma'am. And th look, they will tell you how to make your own homegrown filter to filter out the bad stuff and just get the alcohol, even if you ain't got nothing but a uh, paper towel. But a coffee filter, even tissue, uh, but two ply, four ply, whatever, and you do four or five uh, coats of it. Pour it on there and it filters out, but what comes out is what they want to drink. It captures all the other stuff that they don't want to drink. And then when they do that, they'll pour strawberry Kool-Aid, lemonade, whatever flavor into it, and then just drink it just like that with a flavor on it. Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to tell y'all about the cucumbers. Take a syringe, get your favorite alcohol, or whatever you want to do, in the syringe, get your cucumber. Spurt it into the cucumber. Put the cucumber in the refrigerator for two, three days. Um, and again, the stuff I'm telling y'all is high school kids and college kids. I think they get the ideas from somewhere. So anyway, but the next sexual ep episode you're gonna have with your partner, you pull the cucumber out. And y'all play with the cucumber. <laughs> Yes. So, he can show her how he likes to be sucked, since y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. We just gonna be all adults in here. And he gonna bite off of it and give her some. She gonna show him how when he's in her, how he, she wants to be. And they play with the cucumber. And sexual, this, that, other. And the idea is they end up eating the cucumber as a form of foreplay to them and ultimately having sex. Hmm. And they're getting drunk off the cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he put the cucumber up in her, she put the cucumber up in her, she sucked on the cucumber, he said, no, I'll do it like this, all these kind of things that they do with the cucumber. So, another thing with the grape, I'm going to give y'all one more, the grapes. Uh, I was told you can't do this with the strawberries because the strawberries are too porous, but you can soak the strawberries in the alcohol and they'll absorb the alcohol, but then they're real mushy. But you can still do what you need to do with, with the strawberries after that. But with the grapes, 
you got the, the pin size of the uh, syringe needle is important because if it's too big, you're actually gonna put a hole in the grape and the alcohol is gonna leak out. But even if that's an instance, even if that's the instance and the hole is too big, all you need is a toothpick to put the grapes in an ice tray, covered with some uh, flat. Now I didn't even know these kids knew what an ice tray was. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, kids, they know, um, anyway, they know what an ice tray is. Put the grapes in there, cover with some saran wrap, and put the toothpick in the grape to keep the grape upright so the alcohol does not leak out. You put it in the freezer, the grape freezes, but the alcohol doesn't. So then you pull the grapes out, and you bury the grapes, and you go dig them with no hands. You insert the grape in her vagina, and you go get it out with your mouth. And when you find the grape, if you're able to get the grape, you bite the grape, you bite the grape to release the alcohol in her vagina. While you're licking and drinking the alcohol, you're pleasuring the woman. So all this stuff they use for that kind of stuff. Look, I did this back one day. The lady was like, "We had moved on." He said, like, "Wait, excuse me, can you go back? What you say they do with them grapes?" <laughs> No, no, that's <laughs> So wait, is this the apple F A R M party, a farm party because you got all these vegetables? That's not the apple. Yeah, it's not the P A J R M party. This is this is our kids being creative and doing stuff and making up ways to get drunk. Get high. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the thing. Um, and so I'm gonna say this one and I'm gonna move on. Look, they will inject an apple with some alcohol. And they put the apple, actually put the apple into the young lady's, not her vagina, but. That's too much. I'm sorry, you had a question before you leave? Um, no, I was gonna ask you what to do with the potato, but never mind, they put the apple in the Should I wait for to come back to the butt chug? We're going to watch this video, we're going to take a break, okay? So let's, here's the butt chug video. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me preface it by saying I want you to pay close attention to a couple things. This is a college campus. Um, he obviously has to have some help, but instead of them pouring the Jim Bean bottle into his butt, uh, they actually have beer bottles. And then he's going to do a beer, not, not, some, uh, not liquor. But they pop a can of beer, but he's got a beer bottle that is broken. That, now you hold the, the top of it and you break it off. Oh. Okay, so that part, but but that's smart. Can you use your water again? I'm gonna tell you why it's smart. Because if I pour it in this bottle and I put this water in my butt, this actually, after after so much of this goes in there, uh, okay, that creates a, and then I have a hard time getting it out. Right? So now what they've done is they broke the bottle off, so yeah. now there's an airflow exchange. So now as they pour the beer in, it just goes into his butt. If you put it in a bottle and you do this, imagine how many times that Jim Bean bottle got stuck in them kids in, in Tennessee. Because it, it's going to form a, a plug, and you can't, no matter how hard it's going, right? Same thing I was telling you about the apple before you walked out. The purpose of putting the apple in her butt is she gets to squeeze with her rectum and she actually juices the apple to get the alcohol out of the apple. The same thing with the orange. She put the orange in her butt and she juices, squeezing her rectum, exercising. Anyway, all right, so what you're gonna see is the broken bottle, they put it in his butt, then his, his butt is gonna pour the beer in his butt. I don't care who y'all are, I ain't cool enough with nobody to pour no beer in his butt. I'm just not. <laughs> Nobody. Don't sit down. Oh, God. He even got one. It's your colon, man. You're doing it. Oh, my God. That's his version of the butt 
So he's got that bottle in his butt. See, the bottle is broken. You got broken in on it. And, gonna, and look, he's pouring the beer in his butt. Listen, though, listen. I want to be the worst. and stuff that they do, whether it's peanut butter, whether it's peanut butter and jelly, uh, whether it's just jelly, honey, syrup. See, now we start getting into stuff. Oh, okay, chocolate. Yeah, so the adults, it's, it's no different. They just use whatever it is that they want to use. Yeah. Y'all looking like, ooh, no. So this is the movie the bowling alleys, school, under the bleachers, in the bathrooms, on the school bus. I mean, it takes place all kind of places. So little rainbow bands. Some of you might have seen little kids walking around with all these little colored bands on their wrists. Y'all know how they work? Who's it here? Tell us how they work, young lady. In junior high, you get a certain color band, it's a six band, whatever the color stand for, you do. So I see you got blue, you have orange, you got red, you just sexual stuff. So how do I make you do what, what the blue one says? Pop your band. So what does that mean? How, what does that no, look like? You literally pull the, uh, we couldn't wear them anymore. You pull the bracelet to the inside, whichever one gets the problem. That's the point. 
Y'all hear what she's saying? Yeah. You said whichever one is this thing. Whichever one makes it come out. It takes a lot to break it. Whichever one gives it to her and break it. Because she's standing there with her arm um, like an idiot. Them just you gotta just stand with your arm out there, run up to you, yeah. When they catch you in the hall, just try to break it. So now, that's the first time I've heard that they have to break it. I've always heard pop it. In other words, walk up to it and, and pull it and make it pop. Yeah. So I've always heard that. That's the first time I've heard break it. But again, when I'm telling y'all stuff, find out what they're doing where you live. So yeah, she said they were doing that in middle school and they had to break it. But like I said, it's the blue me all sex. Again, I'm gonna gotta ask these questions. What if she walk up to me and pop my blue band and I don't want to do that to her? So yeah, who enforces the rules? Maybe I want to hurt her to pop my band. She didn't pop my band. I didn't hear her that just, But you see what I'm saying? So, and, and I've been told it works that way guys and girls. So if the girl walk up and pop yours or you walk up and pop the girls, you got to do whatever that color of that band stands for. Now, let me ask you a question, ma'am. Right, and that's what I'm going to ask you. So let me ask you a question. So I know that the colors all mean different stuff. I've even heard stuff like red means, you know, she'll have sex even on her cycle. Oh, but no. this, this, here's the other thing. Black. What does black, what does black mean? Anything you want. Exactly. That's what I've always heard. Black means you'll do anything. Anything you want. Black means you'll do anything. So if somebody walk up and pop your black man, whatever they ask you for, you're supposed to do it. Whatever they want. <laughs> Everybody who wear these bands know that this is what it is. Pink mean oil set. Blue mean just missionary position. Uh, red mean take them in the butt. I mean, yellow mean, I mean, whatever they mean. But everybody know what they mean? Everybody know what they mean? So I've been told that when you agree to put it on, you're, in the, you're agreeing to, if it gets popular, that's what you got to do. Yeah. All right. So that's rainbow. So have you ever seen girls with a whole bunch of different color lipstick, different color stuff, just rainbow? That's yeah. Just but they talk about rainbow parties. It could be a signal. Now I'm glad you asked that because if you hear stuff about rainbow, uh, oftentimes people consider the rainbow as a sign for the alternative lifestyle. You know what an alternative lifestyle is? So don't be confused by people talking about the rainbow and it means one thing over here, but it means something else over there. That's right. <clears throat> Gay, lesbian, I mean, I start, I try not to do it because it's, a whole, it's all the alphabet now. LGBTQIS, y'all know what that is? Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, uh, questioning, inquisitive, and two-spirit. LGBTQI2S. Two, T-W-O. Two. Number two. Oh, yeah, like two, T-W-O, right. Two-spirit. All right. A farm party. Told y'all what that was. That's all the pills they put in there. But what makes this dangerous is synergistic potentiation. Who knows what synergistic potentiation means? One plus one is not two. One plus one might be five. Two plus two is not four. Two plus two might be eight. Two plus two might be 10. I take two of these and I mix the two of these. The cumulative effect on my body is magnified. Okay? So here's a synergistic effect of the two drugs given simultaneously is what makes them dangerous. It makes them more potent. Okay? Four news tonight. Now, the latest trend with and pills. CBS store investigates the growing party scene with a shopping twist. Popping poison. Kids are using completely random combinations of prescription drugs to get high, sometimes with deadly results. I see investigator Lori Stein has the story in her exclusive investigation Popping poison. Imagine reaching into a bowl of pills, grabbing a handful, and popping them all into your mouth, having no idea what you've taken. You know, it might sound crazy, but it's actually a dangerous new trend. And tonight, you're going to meet some people who've done it. You may have caught this recent episode of CSI, in which teens are at a house party. There's a mixed bowl of drugs on the table, and each guest is 
swallows a bunch. If you think these parties are just for TV, think again. We've learned they're happening right here in South Florida. If you don't have any to bring in, no pills to bring in, you can't come in. When everybody's there, you all, we all pour it on the table, and you just take whatever's in there. How much do you take? It's as many as you want. Jasmine says they're called trail mixing, or pharmaceutical farming parties. At first, I was like, I was telling myself, well, I'm not feeling anything. I need to take more. I need to take more. And you took more? I kept taking more. And I kept popping more pills. Jasmine tells us the drug of choice is Xanax, which they call bars. They also like to take oxycodone, Valium, Percocet, anything that teens can get from their parents' medicine cabinets, even heart pills or cough medication. I forgot where I was, and then I keep telling myself, I'm not messed up yet, I'm not messed up yet. And the next thing I knew, I woke up the next day, and I'm like, whoa, what happened? Jasmine's now in rehab here at the starting place in Hollywood. She's trying to get her life back together and get off drugs, but she isn't alone. I also met another teenager here at the starting place. His name is Shannon, and he's also had his share of trail mixing parties. He told me he once took eight pills and had no idea what he was taking. You feel a lot of different combinations and stuff just hit me. Shannon says once the music's going and all the parties around him, he stops worrying about the dangerous effects of so many pills. It's a good feeling, yeah. How? Just makes you feel like, it makes you interact with people a lot more, like you're open and everything. And it just makes it, like for me, it makes it feel normal because I'm used to being all messed up. So I really just say it makes him feel normal. Experts say the use of marijuana up. and heroin has been decreasing. But pharmaceutical drug abuse is growing fast. In a recent Columbia University study, 2.3 million kids took prescription drugs illegally in the past year. That's up more than 200% from 1992, and researchers are calling it an epidemic. Watch this. Watch this video. It's becoming such a big problem, there are even public service announcements aimed at kids who steal their parents or even their grandparents' medications to get high. Well, hers out here, the rest of them is gone. Usually it's the kids' parents went out of town or they went on a cruise or they went here, there, they're at a meeting, dad's at work. And this teenager named Kyle says parents often have no idea their child is at a trail mix party. And I would just call my mom up and be like, Mom, you know, could, uh, could I sleep over so-and-so's house? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Just be back in the morning, you know, sometime around 10. So I'll be like, okay, that's cool. And instead of sleeping over wherever, so I'll be out all night just partying and stuff. I would say half every pill. Barbara Zolman runs a community service. How many of y'all gonna let y'all kids call y'all from somewhere and say, can I stay here? And you just say, oh yeah, be home for all around 10. <laughs> Forces 
the content out. So his his, uh, his crew, he found that they were huffing the ready with and putting it on the ship. What's I want to put it on the ship? What's I want to put it on the ship? He found out the customers were bringing it back because it wasn't working, right? I don't know how or what made him find out, but right, the fuel's full, but there's no gas. There. No gas in. It. But see, there's a seal there, so if the seal's broke, we would know it's been used. How many times did you ask to check the seal? Oh, I always check the seal. I don't play with the seal. <laughs> oh, what, man? She asked me how many times do I check the seal. I told her I always check the seal on the seal. Yeah, but you sound like my wife. My wife checked the seal and checked the seal. If we got stuff in the cabinet right now that expired yesterday, oh. she's going to throw it away. Yeah. yeah. Expired yesterday. Okay. Any of those? So what, man? The Bluebell thing you talking about? The biggest Bluebell ice cream? Oh, okay. If it ain't still, you ain't even. All right. All right, so here's a kid telling you how to get high on the skin. Hey, Jack, I'm going to teach you how to smoke Smarties. He's going to teach you how to smoke Smarties. First, you have to get Smarties. First, you got to get Smarties. Um, don't get the ones that are gum. Just get the original, pen, original ones. Grab it like this and come hold it up. Like for about one minute, but I already have it. Now, suck it up. Not through your lungs because you might choke. Just keep it in your mouth. Uh, that's all it's sucking in the dust and then it's gonna blow it out. And it blows and out some more. I made this bone. He made his homemade bone out of a Ziploc bag. And hold it around three packs in a little plastic bag, smash it with a hammer until it's really powder like sh sugar powder put a straw with this so you can google smoking smarties too and you'll see a bunch of kids showing you how to do that bunch of kids doing a little tutorial on how to do it what i find interesting about them telling you this is for those of you who've seen the doctors show before the show called the doctors like sometimes you're on good morning america or whatever when this was spreading like wildfire they came on Good Morning America, and they were talking about the dangers of this. The kids aren't getting high off this. At best, they're getting a sugar rush. Might be a sugar rush, but it's more hazardous than it is a reward for them. They're inhaling the little crystalline-like particles into their lungs, and you heard him say, not into your lungs, keep it in your mouth. There's a bunch of kids that'll tell you, be careful not to swallow it or not to get it in your lungs. It's like they know it's not supposed to go into their lungs, but they don't know why. The little crystalline like particles is getting into their lungs and it attaches to the inside of their lungs and in essence, it's trying to eat its way out of their lungs because the lungs aren't made to digest anything, just to process what goes in, what comes out. Those little crystalline like particles, you tell them to squeeze it up to get like sugar, they're getting in their lungs and you got kids running around talking about my chest hurt, my chest hurt. Maybe they've been doing this, maybe. I'm not saying this is the reason, but maybe they've been doing this. And now it's eating away at their lungs and they, there's no way to fix your lungs once they're eating away and messed up like that. People who've smoked and been smoking for years, research says if you stop smoking, your lungs will go back to being as healthy as they were before. If you know you stop smoking for however long. <laughs> this, there's no coming back from the stuff eating away at your lungs from the inside. Google smoking smarties. You see all these little kids doing this. So what's causing it? Is it the, the food coloring? What's causing what? causes that even or what? Oh, I don't know. Is there, is there chemicals besides uh, the sugar? Uh, other than sugar, powder, Well, I've just been told that your lungs weren't made to process anything, so it doesn't want to get it out. can't process the sugar, it's just so, there. It's yeah. just, and, and it's, it's clogging stuff. Yep, it's about to eat the way it's edge of She said your lungs are wet already, you're putting that sugar in there, and that, that's going to stick to it. That's right. Yeah. All right, anybody know what jingle is or blood hash? You might have heard of it. Here's Mark Fomby again. I want to know who thought of this and why. What were you thinking? This is human feces and urine in a two liter bottle. What? How do you get the poop in the bottle? I'm just saying. Y'all have been to the doctor, the doctor asked you, you know, um, are your turds normal? Do they float? Do they sink? Do they sink? Some of y'all think that's gross, right? That's where I go. I, so, turd size, size of that two liter bottle, 
How do you get it in there? Is it diarrhea? Is it, what, I mean, what, what, how, what, what do you do? How do you get it? Who thought of this? And why? Makes no sense. But human feces and urine in the bottle. Instead of putting the top on the bottle, you put a balloon on the bottle. Again, from young folks. Mr. Fonby, if you really want to capture all of the gas, use the helium grade balloon, because them nylon balloons, it, it, some of it leaks out. How do you know that? <laughs> but you put the balloon over the bottle. You sit it over in the corner. If you sit down in the sun, it works even better, it works faster. But in a day or two, that balloon, you know, when you put it on there, it's just gonna lay down. In a day or two, that balloon starts to fill up. And fill up the gas. Them jokers take that balloon off and shh. Yo, girl, you wanna hit this? Oh, oh so just just like the gas out of the balloon. Just like the cow. And they share it. But this is human <laughs> and they call this the good kids high. Because they're not introducing, they came out of your body. They're not introducing any foreign substances to their body. They just came out of your body. They call it the good kid type. It came out of somebody's body to be shared and it wasn't matter. That's what it looks like when you see it, when the balloons are filling up. Right there. This is what, uh, let's see, it gives you, it releases a methane gas from the balloon to give a euphoric high, similar to ingesting cocaine, but with strong hallucinations of times past. That was from the Collier County Sheriff's Office. The downside is the people who use jingle dislike the taste of sewage in their mouth and the fact that the taste continued for several days. You think? Not. You think? <laughs> you think? And the kid's big thing is, you know what? It's legal. <clears throat> it ain't nothing illegal about it. Can't get arrested for it. Okay, I'm gonna bring it home for y'all. Every year, y'all see an increase in JPD at the state fair, sheriff's office and JPD. Have y'all ever noticed how the last three, four days there are more around the porta potties than any other time? The porta potties. Y'all uh, paid any attention? Because what the kids have been doing for about the last four or five years that they've been made aware of it is day ten, day eleven, day twelve, especially the porta potties haven't been emptied that whole time. What's in there? So they go in that porta potty and they get in there and they close that door and they lock that door and they just in there and they're like, And the complaints were, seriously, about, about three or four years ago, the complaints were kids are taking over the porta potties and you know, nobody can use the porta potties. Hines County Sheriff's Department sending folks out trying to figure out what's going on. And the kids talking about they want to go to the fair, it's about to be gone, it's about to leave town. Yeah. And they weren't worried about that, they done been twice already. They ain't worried about the fact that they're about to leave, they're going to get high in the porta jump. Now I don't know about y'all, and I ain't trying to be gross, but if I'm out in public like that and I gotta go to that porta party, this is what I usually do. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 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 And I'm sorry y'all, I might come out still buckling, still zipping up, because I don't know my real long, but I, to go in there, I gotta hold my breath to even go in there. And these jokes are gonna go in there and just hang out in there. Doing, right, the last resort for me. If I gotta go in there, I'm trying to hold my breath to go in there.
heightened sense of your awareness, uh, things around you. That's what that's what the rush is. Uh, but then it's followed by sedation. Even though doctors and police say they haven't seen any local cases of people who have taken Jacob, they say they do see quite a few young adult males at the emergency room who have taken hallucinogens. They say depending on what they've taken, the symptoms can vary. Lower, lower your blood pressure, lower your heart rate, uh, lower your respiratory drive, uh, so that you stop breathing. Jacob can do all that, and the long-term effects are worse. They include brain damage, stroke-like symptoms, even destroying bone marrow to the point of developing leukemia. All that from getting high off human feces and urine. That's the very question that we have, and it, it, it is. Why, why do you ingest something into your system that's that nasty? You know, you have to ask those folks that are doing it. Do something stupid at age 18 and pay for it the rest of your life. That's yeah. And that's kind of stuff we're dealing with. Who wants to collect the gun Alright, y'all heard of Flocka? So Flocka is uh, one of those drugs that's made from amphetamines. Um, it, it's a synthetic drug. Um, same with several others. Y'all heard of Mary Jane? Yeah. Mary Jane, but Mary Jane is actually a drink you can buy in the store. Uh, it's high though, it's like $30 for 12 pack. Look, look, man, look what it says. It, this calms you down. It, it's a soothing thing. It's an all-natural salt drink that's made from a special blend of herbal extracts, including kava, passion flower, carbonated water, and all-natural cane sugar, sugar to help provide relaxation to both the body and mind. Great for tense situations like job interviews, first dates, long trips, or for when you'd like to toke up when you want to smoke some weed but you ain't got nothing. Just drink some Mary Jane. <coughs> This is purple drink. Um, it's it what you buy in the store. Drink promises to get you back down to earth. It's, it's also a depressant. Mm -hmm. Ingredients known for the relaxation effects. I think it's interesting. I obviously think it's getting at a demographic of younger college age students, maybe up to like 25 or 30, that's um, targeting their lifestyle, going from high to low. Some street names you might recall, Lean, Perk, 
scissor, scissor, purple sprite, purple tonic. Again, Texas tea. It's all kind of stuff you might hear them say. Um, and we're gonna skip. We're gonna skip because I need to get to the music part. We know that 65% ethyl alcohol hand sanitizer is formulated to kill nearly 100% of germs, but teenagers are using it to get drunk. 18s have well, recently been treated in San Fernando Valley. But this is the one talking about how they drink the hand sanitizer. It's actually a trend that's been going on for some time, but we're just now starting to see it hit the Los Angeles area. Toxicology expert Dr. Cyrus Rankin says it's more potent than what's in your liquor cabinet. So we're talking about 120 proof alcohol. <laughs> So that's like seven shots of hard liquor. So a few swallows is all it takes to get a person to get the intoxicating effects of alcohol. Calls the poison. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Maybe because I, I was going too fast. If you had to catch up, let's see. Made up of 65% ethyl alcohol. Now, according to parents, there is a disturbing new trend among teens that are using hand sanitizer to get drunk. Doctors are so worried, they called an emergency news conference in Los Angeles. ABC's Paul Ferris has the. I actually did two videos, I was trying to do at the same time, so we want to get that. Y'all heard the choking game? Um, and we're not going to watch these videos, a lot of people get sad about watching these videos. These are all kids that died. From uh, playing the choking game. I'm gonna skip through those. I'm gonna skip through all the pictures. I'm skip through all those pictures. All those kids died from playing the choking game. Everything is written in the coast so we can coincide. 
my thoughts are God. I got 48 tracks to slide. The invincible microphone thing by Kim. Spread the word, man, because I'm in an E F L E C T, a smooth operator operating correctly. But back to the problem. I got to have it. You can't solve it. You silly rap. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, 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 I can keep on going. That's my favorite rap. Favorite rap. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now, did y'all hear me curse? Did y'all hear me curse? Hear me dis did you hear me disrespect a woman? Rakim was the man. Rakim for seven years straight was voted lyricist. He was voted lyricist of the year by all of the other rappers in the game. Now you know you got some skill set when you ain't even got a number one selling record, but all the other rappers vote you as the lyricist of the year. That boy was bad. Anyway, I'm gonna tell y'all this real quick. If I were gonna start right here, this would be country music on this wall. And I would go over here and this would be hip hop, R&B on this wall. Everything else would be on the line between there and here. And all, everything that I'm going to talk about falls somewhere between there and here. This is not to compare country to hip-hop and R&B. I'm talking about everything you can think of. Rock and roll, heavy metal, blues, emo, screamo, grunge, all the different genres that you might listen to. The messages weigh the same. They just give it to you differently. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The messages weigh the same. Now, I can't sing. I wish I could sing. If I could sing, I, I mean, I'd sing for y'all all the time. But, I won't want to warn y'all up front, but I do believe if you have fun while you learn, you're more likely to remember. But if I were to start over here with country, I'd tell y'all that Gretchen Wilson has a song. And that song says, uh, when it rain, I pour a couple more rounds till the hurting and the heartache start to drown. I turn up the lights, I turn up the wine, and I lock my door when it rains, when it rains, I pour. What is she saying? She can't tell her from the floor. Right? That's Gretchen Wilson. That's a country song. But if we went on along this line, we ended up all the way over here. I can tell y'all that Remy Ma has a song that says the exact same thing that Gretchen Wilson just said. But the way Remy Ma says it is what makes it offensive. She calling herself a B. She talking about her ends, her, the N word, all her friends. But every other word is a curse word. But to summarize what she said without going through it, Remy Ma says, when things don't go my way and I have a bad day, I sit on the couch and I sip Kavassie. What did she say? She, did she say the same thing Gretchen said? But that country song on the radio that you hear Gretchen saying, you can snap your feet, uh, snap your fingers and pat your feet, and you're not going to be offended. If you hear Remy Ma talking about the B she is and the, you know, her crew and all the stuff and the day she had, and you'd be like, oh, what in the world? But the message weighs the same. Both of them talking about they had a bad day and they going to get drunk and they ain't trying to deal with nobody else. They just want to chill and relax by themselves. Both of them say the same thing. It's how they say it. That, that's offensive. So I want to encourage you to start paying attention to the messages that's in the songs, not just the type of song that it is. Because it does not matter whether it's country, rock and roll, heavy metal, blues, emo, spring mo, grunge, hip hop, R&B, it does not matter. The message is what matters. So wash your worries down the drain will mean what? <laughs> that joker said, we hunt our honeys now. We take them into town. We start washing all our worries down the drain. Rain is a good thing. Ain't nothing like the first kids out back in the barn, wringing out our soaking wet clothes, riding out that thunderstorm. The ten roof gets to talking, that's some of the best love we make. Cause where I come from, rain is a good thing. Cause rain makes corn, and corn makes whiskey, and whiskey is what made my baby feel a little frisky. <laughs> so he took her downtown, got her drunk. He didn't take her back to his house, he didn't take her to the hotel, he took her to the barn. And it started raining, and the next thing you know, they were naked, and they were making love. See, he didn't say he beat it up. He didn't say he stood up in it. He said they made love. <laughs> For those of y'all who have no idea the two references I just said, those are all songs. Stand up in it, beat it up. Those are the, the words and songs, okay? But he didn't say that. He said they made love. So what now? Um, no. What you say? Just because I like that song. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then when it rains, it's going to See, that's the look I was telling you about earlier. You give me that look, I'm trying to figure out how to approach it out. It's me saying so much. It's me saying so much. What's up, Lee? All right.
Oh, uh, yeah. Sister Urban Mariah, like three six. What does that mean? Y'all know the song we came from. And these are the old songs that's up here now. Sipping scissor in my ride like 3-6. Now I'm feeling so fly like a G6. I'm getting high fast like a jet. G6 is a jet. Bottoms up. What y'all think bottoms up means? What'd you say? Take a shot. So ladies. If you pay attention to the song, and again, all these older songs, I have to do these older songs for my, my more mature crowd, because the new stuff today might confuse a whole lot of us, okay? But these are the older songs. But bottoms up, not just, it doesn't just mean turning your cup, bottoms up. Pay attention to the song. He wants you to keep turning your cup, bottoms up, because... There's a song that I love, but it's called Sale. Okay. I don't know who is by, but he 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 says different things, and he said, "Blame it on my ADD, baby." So he gets to a part and said, "Well, maybe I should kill myself," and I'm like, "They play this at the at the school." Maybe he should kill himself. Yeah. That's nothing new. I hate myself. I can't stand myself. Sometimes I sometimes I think I should just kill myself. Those are the lyrics to a song too. I hate myself and can't stand myself. Sometimes I think I should just kill myself. Yeah. But in the bottoms up song, they said, if you keep turning your cup bottoms up, by the end of the night, I'm going to have you bottoms up. Face down. That's the way we. Some of y'all looking at me like, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't know that one either? Oh, she's been the freak, Nick. That's what you know. Can I say that not, not offend anybody? What? Um, face down, ass up. That's the way we like to move. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> down through the woods and down to the pasture. Y'all know what that means? What do you think it means? I just let them think it's a big green tractor. I don't change their mind. It's fine. But for the, uh, I, I just need y'all to hear me. Listen to this. She had a shiny little beamer with the rag top down. She pulled up in my drive, but she wouldn't get out. Because the dogs all barking and wagging around. I just laughed to see y'all get in. But she had on a new dress, and she curled her hair. I mean, she was looking too good not to go somewhere. I said, what you want to do, baby? I don't care. We can go to the show, or we can stay right here. And I can take you for a ride on my big green tractor. We can go slow and make it go faster. Down through the woods and down to the pasture. As long as I'm with you, it really don't matter. Get up in my lap, girl. You can drive if you want to. Girl, you know you got me to hold on to. Now, we can go to town, but baby, if you'd rather, I'll take you for a ride on my big green tractor. Oh. <laughs> Is that about John Deere? <laughs> 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 what did you think it was about? I mean, I <laughs> wait, 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 wait. She's not the only person saying Sharon. She's, look, my, my, Sh Sharon is here. Sh Sharon, <laughs> Sharon can tell you. I was at a workshop one day and this lady said, well, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, that's a good country first day. <laughs> that's what you said, too? Well, see, you said that I'm the first day. So I tell people that, I tell people, people that say that to me, and people, 
truth be told, I said some stuff to y'all yesterday and today that y'all probably think ain't nobody told him. Now he be making those stuff. Up. People tell me this stuff. I can't make this stuff up. So now here's my question. If you pulled up in a new BMW drop top, the convertible, and the top is down, you got on a new dress, you just, as the black folks say, you just got your hair to it. You gonna get on the tractor? New dress, new hairdo, are you getting on this tractor with me? She like, oh no, oh no. She's country enough she was. Well, but then he could be, the guy's name could be John Deere. <laughs> That gives you an idea of just talk us on the radio. We gotta pay attention to the words. She said she's heard that song a thousand times and never thought of it like that. So the first thing that I tell people to do is just take the beat away. If you take the beat away and just pay attention to the words, you're gonna be exposed to a whole lot of different stuff. This, to me, is my music is music. Songs I grew up on. How many of y'all remember that song? Oh yeah. yeah. They don't make songs like that anymore. They don't make songs like that. All right, what about this? One? Let's see how many y'all know this. One. Anybody know who that is? Who is it? Who's the artist? Anybody know? It's three of them. What about this? Oh my God. The previous one was Ray Gilman and Brown. Ray Gilman and Brown. What about this? Y'all know this? <laughs> See, ladies, y'all need to understand something. This is what goes on with a guy when he really likes you, but he gets real nervous. Because he gets, and he don't really know what to say. This is what happens. Things are kind of, they created. They come up with stuff because I never would have thought no Ray Shrummer was drummer here backwards. You know, but anyway. Who was that yesterday? We were talking about the games in Amory, Mississippi. Amory is what I said. You said it's Amory. Let's see. Tell me how many of you folks you know. <laughs> Stuff stick is the fact that there's a hook that catches your attention. 
But then it gets to a part where there's something in the song that now your song, because there's something in that song that you identify with. It makes sense to you, you like it. There's a How many of y'all have heard a song on the radio before and you're like, I can't stand that song? And then two weeks later, you'd be like, that's my new jam right there. What happened? What happened? You heard something. Right. So it's the difference between did you hear that new song? Yeah, but have you really listened to it? Because when you start listening to the lyrics, if some, some of y'all got a new favorite song or a favorite song y'all like, and y'all don't even know all the words. But the words that you do know are the words that just, oh yeah, that's that who that's it right there. Matter of fact, y'all make up stuff and put put the wrong words in where the words is that you don't know what they say. That is me. That's you? Yeah. So, uh, old, old school example, my little sister Misty, who ain't never been, she never been to church girl. Never been to church girl. But I remember Misty saying, poison ivy, poison ivy. Late at night when you're sleeping, poison ivy comes a creeping all around. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. Mr. Sang that ass, going down the highway, going down the highway. She just made up her own words and put in there. She didn't know nothing about poison ivy. None. Okay. Uh, but that, that's the kind of stuff we do. There's a research that says some of you are um, visual learners. Y'all can watch. Watch a teacher teach. Never take a note. The teacher can give you a test. You can pass the test. Some of y'all are auditory learners. You don't even have to watch the teacher teach. But as long as you hear what's being said, they can give you the test, you can take a test and pass that test. But the research says most of us are kinesthetic learners or tactile learners. Y'all know what that means? Hands-on learners. We have to see it, we have to do it, we have to practice it, and then you won't like you to remember. That's me. Look, I am so kinesthetic that even as a college student, I'll tell you that I gotta read out loud the notes I wrote, know I wrote, so I can hear myself say what I know I see, and I'm the one who wrote it. Y'all get that? I, I take notes. But when I'm studying, I got to read them out loud just so I can hear myself say what I see. But the research says, for you visual learners, if I give you the same test seven to 10 days after you've taken that first, give you the same test seven to 10 days later, you have about 7% retention. It means you forget 93% of what you saw. <laughs> seven to 10 days later, you forget 93% of it. For you auditory learners, it's 13%. For you kinesthetic learners, it's 23%. But the research says this, if you put all three of them together, you can remember 53% better if you put all three of them together. You see it, you hear it, and you do it, it increases what you retain by 53%. How many of y'all use a 53% increase in stuff you need to remember? <laughs> see it, hear it, do it. Now, the research would only say, if you do that at least three times, you increase what you remember by 74%. Now, that's a big jump. See it, hear it, do it. See it, hear it, do it. See it, hear it, do it. And some of you need to do it more than three, but at least three times. And you can, so when I do this with kids, I ask them, how many of y'all can use a 74% increase in a grade? Now, wait a minute. How many of y'all can just use a 74? Y'all didn't catch that, did you? Because I just told them how to make a 74. If they see it, hear it, do it at least three times, that's a C, they pass it. See it, hear it, do it at least three times, that's a 74% increase. So if you're already a C student and you get a 74% increase, you bust on an A wide open. All that. Guess what music does? I'm going to show you what music does. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. What, what, what am I going to do? Huh? What did you say? Somebody said it. Who said it? <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. I, I, somebody over here said it too. How y'all know this is thank you, I ain't even been there yet. Because I was giving you, you saw because you know that's how they do it. <laughs> See it, hear it, do it. And increase what you truth be told, some of y'all right now, if I played a song from the 1970s for some of us seasoned people, when it come on, the first two, three notes, you're going to be like, ooh, yeah, I remember that, baby. When I played them songs earlier, some of y'all were like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Who's that's how you heard those songs, though? But how long has that been? So why is it that you remember it just, mm, a couple of bars, and you boom, oh, yeah, I remember that. And what we look at this, when kids do this, a song come on, do, do, ah! They be like, what the world wrong with them? Why they lose their mind? Because the same thing that just happened to you when you heard Al Green come on, you went, oh, yeah. Your response is just different. When they hear that, do, do, ah! They lose their mind, it's the same effect. Now, and what music does is this. You don't even have to do it, so to speak, because it then gets in your mind. See it, hear it, and do it all in your mind. Some of y'all don't even open your mouth, but 
that you sing every word to the song right here in your head. Right here in your head. Some of y'all know the dances that you were doing to the song, and you see that dance right here in your head. You never even have to do it anymore. Some of us are too old to do some stuff we used to do. How many of y'all remember the running man? That's about all I can do, though. But I can see myself doing it, but man, that hurt my knee right now. I'm just kidding. But I, I can't do stuff, but I can still see it. That's how powerful this is. So when we start talking about these kids that's listening to stuff, and the messages aren't necessarily good messages, but they're exposing themselves to it, that becomes a problem. And because we don't have a lot of time, can I borrow you? Can I pick on you, though? I'm going to pick on you. Can I pick on you? Come on, come on. Let me borrow you. I'll borrow you for a second. What's your name? Shane. Shane. Shane, I want you to turn around. I want you to look at all of them. And you okay if I put my hand on your shoulder? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, Shane, look. You've been waiting so long. Look at all of them? I, I, I want them to see your face. All right. You've been waiting so long. I'm going to answer your call. Look, I know I shouldn't have had you waiting at all. It's just that I've been real busy. But I've been thinking about what I want to do with you. Now, I know all these other girls have been talking about me and the way I do what I do, but they just heard about me, baby. They want to see if it's true. But you're the only one I want to give it to. And I can see you want me to. Now, you do know that. I just want to You do know that I just been waiting on you to tell me you were ready. Because I know that if only you could let me. <laughs> and as long as you cool with it, I'm going to treat you right. Because right here, it's where you want to be. Now, I know all the other girls have been talking about me in the way I do what I do. But they just heard about me. They want to see if it's true. But you're the only one I want to give it to. And I can see you want me to. Now, how does that make you feel, Shannon? Oh, Tell you should have seen her eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> how does that make you feel? For the sake of time, I'm not going to do a whole lot of other stuff that I would normally do, but I'm going to say this. Would you be surprised to find out that the words that I just said to you, I'm 53, how old? Uh, 33. Well, you might not want to check it out. So you're 33, but the words I just said to you, the 53-year-old man speaking to a 33-year-old young lady made yeah. you feel like I was trying to speak games. Yeah. But the song that was on the radio was a 15-year-old girl mm -hmm. singing those words that I just said to her. She was 15. You've been waiting so long, I'm here to answer your call. I know that I shouldn't have had you waiting at all. I've been so busy, but I've been thinking about what I want to do with you. It sounds innocent it when does. I'm singing it to her. It sounds like it sounds a girl singing. Yeah, it does. I'm going to play a song for you just a second. But now, the second one that I want to do while you're up here, if you're okay. okay. The second one is this. Um, you said, Shane? Shane. I know you say you usually don't. But Shawty knows she's front. Because Shawty knows what she wants. She just don't want to make it seem like she's easy. I hear you saying what you won't do. But all y'all know, we probably going to do. What you've been feeling deep inside. Girl, go on and let it out. Tell me what to drink. Go on and let it sink in. You just here for the weekend? Well, I was thinking that we can see what we can be if you press fast forward. You want another run? Because if you're down, I'm bored. Well, while I'm filling up your cup, I'm filling on your butt. And you don't even care that I thought you was ugly before I got drunk. <laughs> Y'all see how I moved over here right here? <laughs> That before I got drunk, I thought you was ugly. Y'all missed that? No. How many of y'all have heard that song? Hey, she said she usually don't. Yeah. But y'all didn't know she fun. But y'all didn't know she won't. She don't want to seem like she's. I hear you saying what you won't do. But you know we probably gonna do. Go girls, your birthday. No. Oh. That's blame it on the goose like that's got you feeling loose. Yeah. Blame it on the drone that's got you in the zone. Blame it on the. <laughs> oh, that was a ringtone. <laughs> so, one of the parts I like 
point out that a lot of people just don't pay any attention to. Y'all, hold on, y'all give, give me a few more minutes. A lot of things that people just don't pay attention to is, yeah, I told you, if you take the beat away, you just do the words like I've been doing. But then we get to the second part. He says, ooh-wee, she spilled a drink on me. Now I know she's tipsy, because now she's got a body on me, and she keeps staring me right in my eyes. Ain't no telling what we gonna do. But girl, I'm about to show you. Y'all be yeah. So listen, he said, I know she done got drunk because she done wasted her drink on me. Now she rubbed it all up on me and talking about, I'm ready to be bad. <laughs> so she ready to go. So he says, all I did was put her in my car. And I put my, no, and she put her hand on my thigh. Now she got the seats all wet in my ride. She touched my leg and she got the seats wet in my car. Y'all missed that part too? No, we got it. No, I'm saying it in the song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. you missed it <laughs> when he says, "Oh, uh, she put my hands on my thigh. Now she got the seats all wet in my ride, all over my ride." I don't think I processed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to get people to do: process. And y'all give her a hand for Bobby. <laughs> so there's stuff that. I want y'all to see, so I'm gonna skip through a lot of this other stuff. There's stuff I want y'all to see, and I want I want to play some of the songs, because me singing them is one thing, but y'all hearing them for the, for yourself. Rain is a good thing, Luke Bryant. My daddy spent his life looking up at the sky. He cussed and kicked the dust, man, so it's great to dry. He climbs up in the city, the weather man complains. But where I come from, rain is a good thing. The rain makes corn. Thank you. 
These are all words that's in songs that refer to something to drink, something going on. Some of you might hear kids say, some of these songs are in country, rock and roll, heavy, everything you think of. So is there anything else I need to explain to you before I move? Anything? Incredible Hope. People always say, say that. Well, Incredible Hope is hypnotic and Hennessy, generally. But now, you need to know that it's hypnotic and anything brown. It turns it green. Hypnotic is a blue liqueur. You mix it with anything brown, it's going to turn it green. But So when they say uh, Incredible Hope, they're usually talking about hypnotic and Hennessy. But if you don't like Hennessy, you want something else. As long as it's brown, it'll turn that green. Okay? Anything else? Alright. So the other song that I did for Shannon when she was up here was this song. Blame it on the alcohol. This is one people, I mean, people just don't pay any attention when he says that. Nobody's, 
get us out of the way. And then we get to a point where we, we stand there watching all these folks come in too, and we can't even get close to them. I'm like, last night I was hanging out with all of them. <laughs> now I can't even get close to them. But, but it was nice. It was, it was real nice. Um, anyway, who prophets me about? In the scope records, I got six minutes. In the scope records, one of the major producers of hardcore hip hop and R&B and gangster rap is owned by, in other words, majority controlled by me. Anybody know? Anybody? Put the boy in the queue. UMG. Universal Music Group. Do y'all know who owns Universal Music Group? Anybody know? Yeah. Who? <laughs> Universal Studio. Now, do you know who owns Universal Studio? Who? Who? Got any idea? <laughs> For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Come mm. here. So when Interscope Records makes money, Comcast is getting rich. <laughs> yeah. Um, a couple of songs I want to just kind of give you a little bit of before. Y'all know this song? So y'all heard that before? So y'all know what he's saying, right? Give me a second. I need to get my story straight. My friends are still in the bathroom getting higher than the Empire State. My lover, she's waiting for me though, just across the park. But wait, my seat's been taken by some sunglasses asking her about a scar that I know I gave to her months ago. And she's been trying hard to forget it. But through all the drinks and all the subtle things, all the holes in my apologies, I've been trying real hard to take it back. But by the time the park closes and she feels like falling down, I'm gonna carry her home again tonight. What y'all think he's saying? Say it again, say it out loud. Y'all get that? I just came out the bathroom. She's sitting over at the bar, but it's a dude sitting in my seat talking to her. And he asking her about that scar I gave her a couple of months ago. And I've been trying to apologize for it. I've been trying to get her drunk. I've been trying, I've been trying to let her know I'm sorry, but wait a minute now. Why are you sitting there in my seat talking to my girl? See, most people don't pay that any attention. No attention. So what? Is it what Don't you? I can see it. You've been waiting on me since I said that I was there in the club. 
y'all catch that? Because you've been waiting on me since I told you I was hitting the club. So she snuck up to his bedroom. She don't even live there. He never went to the club. She waiting on him in his bedroom, at his house. He went to the club. She called him and I said, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Whatever you talk to, that conversation ought to be boring. I'm, I'm at home waiting on you. But wait a minute, it gets worse. Listen to what she says. I know you've been getting so funny. And I know you've been getting horny. You be you be you 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 she was sending me texts. You ain't got to remind me. She already said if I don't come on time, she might go crazy. She already crazy. She don't get crazy.